YouTubers and welcome to another beer review with me, Peter, the master of hoppets. Sorry for the messy background. <laughs> kind of tired now. I'm brewing today for the first time in a long fucking time. But I am not brewing beer. I am brewing wine. Making a plum wine. Thing is, um, it's kind of a nostalgic and very cool story for me, at least personally, and my family. So many years ago, back in was it 87, it was before I was born even. But my, my grandfather passed away. And uh, there was this family tradition that every year him and a friend, they brew fruit wines uh, with fruits from their garden. And one of the most common ones he did was a cherry wine that we have a tradition that we drink every Christmas. And we have one bottle left of that. Hopefully me and my dad will do something about that soon. But <laughs> he also made plum white wine because he has uh, with yellow plums or, well, the fleshy shell. Uh, and very lightly colored plums in the garden my grandmother has and he would use used to make uh, wine with that as well like a summery fresh wine so uh, my grandmother just got a uh, what's it called she got had hip surgery uh, because of arthritis and I'm sorry I'm rambling about this personal stuff it's just kind of nice you know to talk about for me at least uh, so she couldn't really gather all the tons of plums that were from her a plum tree in the garden. So she asked me if I wanted to do something with it, and I was like, do you know what? Let's go into Granddad's old books and find his recipe for plum wine. So I'm brewing a plum wine recipe that was made the last time, probably in the 70s, uh, and it's probably from 60-something, the recipe itself. So it's really cool. Uh, got, got around 15 kilos of plums, carried them home, and brewing now. Uh, uh, I, or I'm... Uh, Pressing the juice at the moment. I'm almost done. I had to do it in, batch, in batches because I don't have a pot that's big enough to boil everything because I uh, lent it out to a friend. But thought I'll take a break while the stuff, the new set or the new batch, is boiling up of plums and have a beer and relax a little. Uh, and what better way to do that than with an IPA? And this one is from Sweden. So this one is from Uppigors, guys. And this is uh, their lavish IPA on 6.8%. We gotta give a big thanks to uh, Johan in Sweden for sending this one out. You rule, man. This IPA, guys, is brewed with Mosaic, yes. Chinook, and an experimental hop called HBC 344. So they say it's a very fruity, tropical IPA on the side. My kind of IPA. So let's get this cracked. That's a nice hazy orange color. It looks like your traditional American style IPA. Nice one from the white head. Let's check out the aroma. Yes. <laughs> Sweet citrus, peach, plums actually. <laughs> Not like dry, but fresh stone fruit plum, kind of that. The aroma that's going on in the kitchen right now. Well, maybe it's the kitchen, I don't know. Citrus fruit, sweet citrus fruit, grapefruit, a lot of sweet citrus, some dankness from the mosaic. It's making my mouth water. I really want this out right now. In my belly. Um, yeah, some kind of slight tropical notes. Smells really good. Orange peel, sesty, mandarin orange. Let's give it a taste, guys. Cheers. And thanks a bunch to Johan for the beer. what I needed. <laughs> that is good. I think this is one of the best IPAs I've had from Opigos ever. More of a traditional West Coast IPA, but with some tropical notes, but that's perfectly fine right now. My book, just a cool IPA is fucking awesome. Mm. Tropical fruit notes slightly, but tons of grapefruit, tons of uh, orange, sweet citrus fruit, nice piney flavor as well. It's like earthy, resiny flavor on the back end, but up front it's mostly grapefruit, sweet citrus fruits. It tastes very fresh and a good kick of that, you know, dank, green, herbaceous character as well. But mostly it's a grapefruit and citrus bomb. Very West Coast, very West Coast American IPA. Really good. I could crush quite a few of the, these. It's not as good as some of the like, Amont beers. I prefer them to be more tropical, but it's still really nice. It's, it, it's more the classic American West Coast, super dank, tropical, but it doesn't have like a big malt backbone. It's a very light malt backbone, which is nice. It's, it, I don't taste any of the malt at all. It's hot, hot flavored beer. Really good. So, rate wise for the Up Goes the Lavish IPA. I'm going 93. This is really nice. This is, I also think it's because I really felt like an IPA right now. I might pump it up a little bit higher. Sorry, guys. But, 
that's how it is sometimes, you know. The circumstances and the beer you have in the given circumstance can make the beer even better or even worse. Depends on what you're doing. If you're on the beach and you're having a beer that might be like a 90 and it's super hot, that might go higher because it's a perfect setting at all. And right now, it's the perfect type of beer. We're brewing and eating a break. So guys, 93 for the Up It Goes Lavish IPA. Definitely check this one out if you can. I only think you can get it in Sweden, unfortunately. But good stuff. Thanks a bunch to Johan for sending it out. And as always, remember to comment, subscribe, check out the Facebook fan page and Twitter. I want to say cheers. See you guys in another beer review.